Last year, I showed an easy way to remote control shop equipment using a power switch tail, a couple batteries, a switch, and some wire. Today at the House of Hacks, I'm going to show how I made a push-on, push-off switch that mimics the way a lot of shop equipment are controlled. Hi makers, builders, and do-it-yourselfers, Harley here. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the House of Hacks channel to get notified of future videos. Last year, I made a video responding to a comment by Rob about how I made the remote control switch on my central shop vac system. In that video, I showed the core design element, the power switch tail, and how to use it with a simple battery operated switch. Today, I'm going to show a different way to control the same power switch tail by eliminating the batteries and using a switch with two buttons, one to turn the tool on and one to turn it off. This is similar to how many shop tools are controlled. It also has the additional feature of being able to be expanded upon in the future. If you recall, the power switch tail requires 3 to 12 volts DC applied to these two connectors to cause the tool to turn on. Batteries are of course one source of power for this, but they need to be replaced on occasion. Since I didn't want to deal with replacing batteries, in my application I decided to use a surplus wall wart style power supply. I had a bunch of these lying around and figured this would be a good application for one of them. I plug it into the same outlet I plugged the power switch tail into. I connect the low voltage power supply to two connectors on an RJ11 jack. Then I connect the other two connectors on the RJ11 jack to the two connectors on the power switch tail. This allows me to use a phone wire as an extension cord. For the switch's end, I put another RJ11 jack in a project box. This project box can now have any type of switch mechanism in it I want and provides a nice modular way to use different types of switches. For example, I could put in a toggle switch, just like, like I showed in the last video. Simply wire the negative side of the power to the negative input on the power switch tail and wire, the, wire a switch between the positive side of the power and the positive input for the power switch tail. However, since we have power in the project box, we aren't limited to just a simple mechanical switch. We can build circuitry that controls the power switch tail. The first thing I've made is a simple latching switch. Similar to the switches on many tools, like my drill press and my bandsaw, I press the green button to turn on my vacuum and push the red button to turn it off. Inside the box is a simple flip-flop. A flip-flop is a type of circuit with two inputs, called set and reset. It also has two outputs, called Q and bar Q, or also known as not Q. It's just the inverse of Q. The inputs receive momentary pulses. If the pulse is on set, then Q goes high, and bar Q goes low. If the pulse is on reset, then Q goes low and bar Q goes high. If we consider just one output, Q, we can see set causes it to turn on and reset causes it to turn off. They ju it just flip-flops between the two positions. Flip-flops can be made with a variety of different circuits, ranging from discrete components to various types of integrated circuits. I happen to have a quad two input NOR gate chip in my parts bin, so I use that, but I could just as easily have used NAND gates, a chip with a dedicated flip-flop circuit in it, or a couple transistors and resistors. Once I had the circuit built, all I had to do was put it in the box and wire it up. The switches are wired with pull-down resistors. This allows the inputs to be normally low and go high when the button is pressed. The green button connects to the set input. The red button connects to the reset input. The negative input to the power switch tail goes to the negative power connector. Since I'm switching the positive side of the power, I'm using a PNP transistor. Its base connects to the flip-flop's Q output. The power switch tail's positive input goes to the transistor's collector. And finally, the transistor's emitter connects to the positive power connector. In this configuration, the transistor acts as the switch for the power switch tail's power. When it's all put together, pushing the green button turns on the appliance, and pushing the red button turns it off. Since this switch system is modular, I have plans to build other switches too. The next one is a current sensing switch, so the vacuum will automatically turn on when a tool is in use, and will turn off, after a short time delay, when the tool is turned off. I'd love to know in the comments below if the level of detail I presented here in this video was too much, just right, or too little. 
If this is your first time here at House Attacks, welcome. I'm glad you're here and would love to have you subscribe. I believe everyone has a God-given creative spark. Sometimes this manifests through making things with a technical or mechanical bent. Through this channel, I hope to inspire, educate, and encourage these types of makers in their creative endeavors. Usually this involves various physical media like wood, metal, photography, electronics like in this video, and other similar materials. If this sounds interesting to you, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for joining me on our creative journey. Now go make something. Perfection's not required. Fun is.